This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> I finally did it. So uh, I asked a little while back. So basically I got asked by IK Multimedia if I demo Tonex, the, which is essentially their own version of capturing profiling. So we've seen Kemper have been doing this for about a decade. Um, I think Moore and Fractal have certain elements of this. And then obviously Neural DSP with the Quad Cortex. Uh, at the time that that came out, Rabia did uh, kind of a few little bits of of kind of comparing captures and profiles and like asking about whether the quad cortex was more accurate than the Kemper. I did that at the same time and I didn't really come to the conclusion that the quad cortex was necessarily sounding more like the amps that I had tried. I think there is a consensus that the quad cortex is a bit better for heavier tones than the Kemper. I think that was the thing that there's certain, you know, when you get into really distorted territory from something like a diesel or a dual rectifier that the Kemper doesn't really excel at those captures is I think what people said. Anyway, they asked me if I would check out Tone X and the first thing that I was drawn to with Tone X was the uh, Joe Bonamassa Dumble ODS. So IK Multimedia have bought that amp from Joe Bonamassa and uh, have created some really cool captures of it. I was really impressed with the sounds of that. I think it's the first time that a company has made a step towards making it possible without any real hardware constraints to be able to step into this profiling capturing game. And I think that's important because uh, up until this point, it's mostly been um, requiring hardware. Now you can do it with kind of any uh, reamp box. So I bought this off of eBay. I was going back and forth with chaps from IK Multimedia about what would do the job. They have their own piece of hardware that can do it, but I kind of wanted to show that you could do it with your own. Um, so I used the Radial X amp. Bit on the setup here, I'll drop that in now. So I'm about to embark on my first Tonex capture. Uh, I've just been reading how we do this, and uh, it's a thing. I'm gonna go out of the left 
of this. Uh, so that needs to be main output left, which should be the top one, right? And then I'm using the radio X amp that's going into this amp, which is going into this cab. Let's see what happens. <laughs> It's not the most straightforward thing to do the first time. Obviously, this is my first time trying this. There are on-screen prompts that can take you through it. Um, but yeah, the things you'll need, you need uh, uh, an XLR cable to come out. So a jack to XLR was what I used. So I'm coming out of the back of my interface into here, which receives an XLR. Um, and then from here, you go out of your reamp box into the front of your amp, and then the microphone goes back into your interface. But it's kind of doing the same job that you can do with the Kemper or the Quad Cortex. But what's really cool about it, well, you don't have to spend 1,500, 1,600 pounds to get into the game and, and start you know, creating your own profiles. This might open it up so that more people can potentially use this stuff. For instance, you know, in the DAW, you can't do anything with a quad cortex or a Kemper, so I'd be much more likely to use uh, some favoured Tonex capture models um, than I would be to reamp through a Kemper or a quad cortex because that takes a load of time. Once you've got a good Tonex capture, you're kind of good to go. And this is the sort of the same thing that I thought that the Strymon Big Sky might do for those people that are using uh, the Big Sky in their workflow already. This really makes it possible to integrate those sounds into your workflow. In the same way, I can now use captured um, tones, you know, once I've created them within my normal kind of workflow with the DAW plugin workflow. And it's something that's not up until this point been possible for me. Um, so I think that's a really cool thing. The other thing is that whereas if I'd recorded through the amp, I can't then go back and stick like a, a drive in front of it. Whereas once I'm using Tonex, what I did, I've experimented with this, is to chuck via Helix Native in some drive, um, I think I put in uh, an Earthquaker Devices plumes uh, emulation, put that before the model, and then it kind of is essentially doing the job of chucking a Tube Screamer in front of your Mezaboogie Mark III, which is a thing that would be done in real life, but in the digital world, it's much easier to do. In terms of whether it sounds more accurate than the Quad Cortex, uh, emulation or capture I'll let you be the judge here they are side by side I'll have the real amp then also the Tonex and then also the Neural DSP Quad Cortex <laughs>
Leave your comments below if you've got uh, thoughts about which is more accurate. And I, I don't really necessarily, I don't think you need to hear from me what I think. I've been paid to make this video, so it probably isn't fair to jump in with a, a really hot bias. But I do think what is really cool about this is that it is suddenly available capturing within your DAW. That's a new thing. That's an important step, I think, to get away from devices that cost, you know, one and a half grand towards things that you can get involved in um, for far less money now. If you've got a reamp box and you buy the Tonex software, you can get involved and start using this stuff. And I think that's a cool thing. There's never been any sign that Kemper or NeuroDSP would be able to um, make these things available in kind of VST form. So it's interesting to see IK Multimedia working from the, the other side of the equation and uh, I think as well, so actually creating these captures for me took about 30 minutes uh, to create one. Um, that's kind of the one downside to some of this. I think there's a bit of a, a time constraints thing. So you'd probably want to make sure that you were really happy with the tone that you were getting before you decided to start training the model. That was for the most advanced model. I think it would have taken less time for me if I'd gone for the medium or smaller uh, you know, amount of processing time, but I wanted to get as accurate as it could be. And so I chose advanced. That took about 30 minutes on my machine. It may be different for you, but that's basically the kind of workflow. You, you record a thing and it's recording uh, real recorded guitar signals through your amp. Um, then you go through the training kind of thing, which happens. And then that's, you maybe go and get a coffee whilst that happens. I, I watched Michael Nielsen's video on this, also really worth watching. Um, because he kind of compares it to a Kemper. Basically, now this software gets closer, I think, just about than any other hardware can get for doing this sort of thing. So I think that's a, a, a really cool step forward. And maybe this is going to be the future if some more people kind of pick this up, people that are great at creating captures, creating tones. If more people do it, then I think this could be kind of the future of where we see these things going where you can do more and more kind of within your actual DAW within your PC and you're no longer necessarily having to buy the latest hardware to get more accurate captures you know if you were had your Kemper and you wanted something more accurate you might have thought right well this isn't quite doing it for me the quad cortex maybe that would be more accurate now actually you've got a piece of software which is you know way less than half the price of either of those pieces of hardware that is kind of, I think, slightly more accurate again. And, you know, you don't even have the expense of hardware. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, I'm trying to figure out how you can upload it to ToneNet. Actually, that's the other slight downside of this. There's a little bit of uh, trickiness getting into some of the back end of this. So I've created this Tone model, but I'm not sure how I'm actually going to get it up to ToneX because it's not actually connecting properly yet. But no, I guess that's another problem for another day. Let me know your thoughts. Have you tried this Tonex thing? Are you interested in it? Do you think it's a step forward to be able to have this stuff disconnected from the hardware in your actual machine, in your DAW? I think that's a quite an important step forward. Um, cheers. <laughs>